Hi, my name is Gina and I have purchased a crap ton of eyeshadow in the past few months. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a temporary palette with all of the new eyeshadow that I've acquired recently. This is a somewhat extreme version of what I typically do when I acquire new eyeshadow. Uh, in the past when I have acquired new eyeshadow, it has been the purchase of a pan uh, palette or two or three. And generally what I do is I will say, okay, I'm only allowed to use this eye palette. I'm only allowed to use this palette until I've gotten a sense of what's all in, what all's in here, what I like, what I don't like, etc. And in this particular case, I have a lot more <laughs> than what would typically come in a regular palette. I have here every eyeshadow that I have purchased outside of a palette since about March. The reason why we're doing it kind of this, to this extreme is that I realized that within the last a uh, couple months of particularly buying like my Cleona stuff and my Sydney Grace stuff was that I had made purchases back in the spring in March that I also really hadn't touched or used that much and that includes a I built a ColourPop build your own palette during a sale and I've also purchased some Luxie shadows as well that are in here and I realized that some out of both of those orders I basically hadn't used and I don't really love that. I don't love that feeling. So I decided to pull everything that was new to me out and we're going to combine it with my Cleona orders and my Sydney Grace order and we're going to build one big palette that I'm going to work out of for the next few months. I have here in front of me, like I said, Colourpop shadows, Luxie shadows, Sydney Grace, Cleona, uh, JD Glow as well. I have a couple of the eyeshadows that I repan from the Pat McGrath palette. And we're just gonna make a, a temporary giant rainbow palette for everything that I've got here. And I figured it would be fun to see. I also have two different types of magnetic palettes here. I have these two here, or I have these two which are from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. They are blemished uh, XXL palettes. I also have an Adept 88 palette. That's what my Cleona ones are sitting in right now. It's the one with the cool alligator skin cover and the very like minimal branding. I really like this. And actually, we're going to be building the temporary palette in this one plus one other that I have here. Now, this one came damaged. I don't know if you can tell there's some waving in the magnet. And they actually refunded me and sent me an additional one. But right now, my all of my other shadows are sitting in those two. So we're going to build probably across two of these adept palettes. If we need a third one, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, from there. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. My first order of business is to just kind of move all of this stuff from the... from... Now you got to hear my ringtone. Uh, as I was saying, my first order of bus business is to move all of my shadows from this one over here for uh, us to be building in. more 
more than enough like reds and oranges as I'm sure you noticed in my mega palette. I'm just gonna take like a little microfiber cloth. This came with my glasses. I'm just gonna wipe this out. It hasn't seen, it hasn't been in my life for very long, so it shouldn't be too much in the way of cleaning. Then I'm gonna put this in the middle so we can work in it. Now, if you have seen my Mega Palette video, and if you haven't, I will link it in the cards above or I guess somewhere in the up area. I, <laughs> I arrange my eyeshadows by color and the way that I do them is by placing the most vibrant shades in the middle and then moving up to desaturated and light and then down to desaturated and dark. That is what I did when I arranged them in landscapes, so when I had my palettes this way. However, I have since noticed that working in portrait works a lot better for me, so adjusting that to portrait has been a challenge. I tried to do it here with, with this shot, with this palette, only to realize that it still made like the most sense when it was landscape rather than portrait. So I'm still kind of trying to figure out exactly how I want to go about doing this. While I think about it, <laughs> I'm gonna grab my, let's see, I'm gonna grab just my reds them in here. This is, this is obviously not a new shadow to me. This is Colored Rain's Sauce. It is my brow color and it stays with me wherever I go. So this is the problem that I run into, or that I ran into the last time I tried to do this. If I attempt to build my most saturated in the middle here, I don't have enough columns for all of the different color families that I like to work in, which is like cool reds, true reds, warm reds, you know, all the way in down to cool purples. So, I'm still very much at a loss for, I think for, for now, I'm going to just build it landscape as I have done before. And we'll address the issue of orientation a little bit more when uh, it comes time to do the, the, the mega palette. So that, all of that being said, I'm going to start building my, like my most vibrant colors. And I do in general prefer to build this core row first and then build up and down. And it does bear mentioning that the JD Glow Shadows, these big ones here, they're not going to go in the main flow of things. They're going to be They're going to be off to the side just because I don't I am not ready to repan them yet and trying to make anything work like outside of trying to make anything, you know, trying to fit the big shades in that's not in my like standard configuration. 
I'm just really not interested in doing that right now. I don't know if I'm gonna end up with a row of cool reds. Uh, that's gonna be TBD. Fortunately, this palette was very much like already sorted by vibrancy. So a lot of like, a lot of that work, at least in terms of the bulk of the shadows, has already been done, which is very nice. It's really interesting how like really, really pretty colors kind of become dull and boring next to something like that. So this palette here is gonna have to come, kind of come off to the side some. You'll be able to see parts of it, uh, but because we're, uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to build into a second. Well, I, we knew we were gonna have to build into a second palette. A little off camera here, but that's, that's the best I can do for now. Whites like this can go in a lot of different places. It just depends on like what spaces need to be filled. Like I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put. Uh, this is Sydney Grace Green Mist. I wouldn't put it in the reds, for instance, but. Like this one here, uh, Snow Queen, could probably go just about anywhere. It's a pretty true white. There may not be enough difference between these two to put them in different rows, but we'll see. Or I guess this, this here could either go in the blue row or the purple row depending. Probably more in the purple, but we'll see how all this shakes out. Um, I definitely, I break out my greens quite a bit, and theoretically this could be more warm blue than teal. We'll see how it goes. Um, but the distinction between all of these is, is so, like, pronounced. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna take all of that back. I'm gonna stack that, these two warm greens, because they're very similar and color friendly, just one is more saturated than the other. And this one's definitely more blue, we'll keep it out, but we do need a row for warm blues. So, for now, at least to hold that place, I'm gonna hold that there. These may get combined. We'll see. You can see that these two are incredibly similar. This is golden peach and salamander. And I believe both of them have gold reflex as well. Yeah, I think these might be dupes. Oh yeah, they're definitely dupes. I think maybe this one on top has a bit more of a red coral base and this one has more of an orange coral base but in terms of like how they show up in the reflect I don't know if you can see it but they're basically dupes all right if I'm gonna you know it's kind of interesting I find that like whether or not a Whether or not a shadow sticks to the pan ends up having a lot more to do with the, or sorry, a sh like a shadow sticking to the magnet has a lot more to do with the pan than the magnet. Uh, if that's something that you were ever wondering about, like why do my 
pan slide around so much. I think, I do think it has a lot more to do with the, the, uh, the, the pan itself. How do I always end up, uh, how do I always end up with so many freaking reds? I like red eyeshadow as much as the next person, but look, I don't need this many. And a lot of these I didn't order, just, just putting it out there. It's like, I don't know if you can tell, but like, these two reds are definitely in the same color family, but these are a bit more orange. bright pink for a hot minute and I think I found it. This is a utopia. This, so a lot of like the ones that I'm placing with the cool pink, some of them could go in the warm purples. We shall see. So like here's a, an interesting and sometimes tricky thing. This is definitely more desaturated than these two, but it's also lighter. And so that can be sometimes a little tricky when you're organizing things because if you put it down here, it looks strange. And if you put it up here, it looks strange. So sometimes what I'll do Stick it in the middle and see what happens. I'm not saying that that's where its permanent home is. It may fit better in this column, but we shall see. We have a lot more in the way of like desaturated light colors than I've ever had before. And I don't know what to do. I'm gonna go over into this palette over here and grab like a lot of the blues and the purples, which is honestly most of this palette. <laughs> so actually let me bring this over here. And I'm just gonna put this in this palette over here just to save some time later. Oh, and then what the hell do you do with a duochrome like this? I, I don't even know. I'll put it over here for now. such a bitch to do in this scheme. I have very much considered like taking out all of my duochromes and having a separate palette for them, but that is something to think about later. We're probably gonna need another row of yellow and another row of orange. So we're just gonna preemptively scoot a lot of this crap on over. I love this shadow. This is Orange Emperor from Touch of Glam. It's so pretty. I feel like this palette at the moment is like going to a very boring place because I got, I did get, I specifically and intentionally got a bunch of quote unquote boring uh, eyeshadows just because 
I was missing a lot of like more desaturated colors I felt like. So I think I'm going to combine it with the other yellows I've got. I love these colors so much. Hmm. They're, they're definitely not green gold though. Let me If you're seeing me like pick up colors, it's because I'm like, wow, that's really pretty. What is that? <laughs> this is the thing about green golds a little bit is that they tend to be darker and more desaturated. Like probably the most vibrant we have is that. Again, it's like, it doesn't really go. Yeah, let's try that and see what that gets us. I guess the best way to put what, like, what would typically go here is, is olive. Like, that is what I'm looking for, is olives. And that's when I'm like, I knew I had more olives than that. <laughs> here is especially because you're seeing this from up top and I'm kind of seeing it from this downward angle I might be putting things in an order that looks really weird to you because of the shift of the shadow and that doesn't that doesn't surprise me very much and should not surprise you very much <laughs> um, just something to, to note uh, if some of you are maybe twitching uncontrollably the incredibly embarrassing amount of green I have. <laughs> I, I said I wanted to expand my greens. Nobody listened to me. It's not true. Talking to myself, don't mind me.
This is a bit more yellow than I would want to be in this row, but I don't know what there is for it. This motherfucker. This is a, a shade from the Visart Dark Mattes, and this is without a doubt always the hardest eyeshadow to categorize in my collection. If I put it with the yellows, it looks too green. If I put it with the greens, it looks too yellow. This is the bane of my existence, but it repressed very well and I don't get nearly enough use out of it, so I put it in here. But I fucking hate it. <laughs> situations like this. Klondike Gold Rush is just a regular, anything can be regular, uh, shimmer. There's just a point where she's kind of like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Doing all of this is such a fuck. Like, every single time it's a mind fuck. Especially cause like, my, how I bought these was so, like, uneven. Like, when I ordered from look I most, almost entirely ordered greens and blues. So it's like, yourself over with that one there, bud. These two rows should probably be flipped. Or columns. Do you ever wish there was a control Z button for life? Because <laughs> that was not the right thing to do. God damn it. because I keep saying to myself like I wish I had like a transition between oh, that's so pretty uh, what is this this is a scuppy. I wish I had a transition between like these I don't even know what I'm saying anymore I'm sorry uh, basically it's a good transition from like a really really warm 
green like this and a less warm green like this. What I wish I had was my Morphe palette depotted because it would fill out this row. In fact, I'm going to leave that one alone because I'm going to have at least four things that will very easily go there. Oh, these are really similar. Uh, well, this one's a bit more vibrant. One of them is actually these are both Cleona shadows. This one is, the bottom one is Orb, and the top one is, oh, Sydney Grace's Springtime. They're similar, but Orb is a bit more yellow, a bit more vibrant. Y'all, do you see how hard my life is? So much eyeshadow. So much. I feel like I'm going to very much regret, like, not addressing these because I'm like, oh, they're they're really cool toned. It's fine. They'll go in the next row or the next column. But are they? Are they really? So I don't know if this is what we're going to do. So just, but if we wanted, we could come over here and say, this is a cool red. We're going to put that there, but it's not a cool red. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> hmm. I think this is too cool for this row, for this column. But I'm leaving it there anyway. I'm just going to maybe trade it for this one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, like, this one is definitely a bit more blue. I'm just going to take a second and kind of straighten these out a bit because it's bugging me. Before I was doing this, I was making decent headway on my portfolio until said decent headway just decided to stop. This is another one of those fucking colors. That's all like, oh, I'm, it's very clear what I am until you try to put me with something else. Like it's too green for this row and too yellow for this row. I guess if it went down at the bottom, it would be fine. But then this one would have nowhere to go because it's definitely too yellow for that row. that at some point, but right now it's just going to hang out there. I don't really think, well, this one goes okay in this row, but the other two don't. What is this? Oh. I also, I neglected to mention, I also pulled out some of, some of my Alamar uh, shadows just because I really like this formula. I love it, but because there are so few of them, like, in my collection in general, they don't get a lot of use. Just in the way of, like, sheer numbers. I don't know if that made sense or not, but... Like, because there are so few of them, just by random chance, they're not gonna get picked as much. Yeah, I'll put that there. <laughs> Let's see. I'm still scooting all the things. I guess something that I have done in the past is like, if it's still like this really yellow green, it's, if it's in that family, I would just build up from it, and even though it's darker, which is probably a thing I should do with these, since they really 
go better in this row. At least one of them does. Hmm. And this is interesting because it's a it's a duochrome. So the more I move it up the palette, the less green it looks. Fuck duo crumbs, man. Like it, it really goes like down here. I love this color and I guess I'm cheating by putting it in here because this is Ace Beauty's Golden Apple. I guess if it's causing problems, which it is, I'll put it, put him over here. <laughs> I really didn't think that I'd had so many yellows, but apparently I do. I can't resist gold, man. Can't resist it. Like a freaking magpie. This is rustic. It's probably gonna go in the greens somewhere. Oh gosh, wow. <laughs> that has such an interesting. Yeah, it's got a gold reflect to it. It should probably try to hang out in the yellows with its peers. So this is a thing to keep in mind. Sometimes things end up in rows where they technically don't belong. Um, like this one, or I'm sorry, this green here. This, uh, this is Urbane from Luxy. It's going in a green row that it's, it's a little bit too cool for at the end of the day, but it, it, based on like all of the colors around it, that's still its best fit. So it's going to go there. And I guess technically the Visard is a bit of a cheat too, so they'll both kind of take a, a quick leave of absence while the rest of everybody gets figured out. Um, all right, so I think that uh, barring something happening when I go to pick out the next set of greens, I think that this palette is gonna be done for the time being. That said, I'm sure something will happen when I go to pick out greens, because greens are one of those color families that the context matters a lot more than I have found like for any other color. So we may come back and revisit this, but for now, we're gonna slide this over, put this one on top, and then bring my second palette in. And we're going to start with the, uh, I guess, I don't know if I'd call it neutral green, but let's, let's go with that and see how we fare. I don't know if I have anything that's like a true neutral green in here. Sometimes I like go to grab things and I'm like, oh god, oh god, it's gonna be too warm. We're gonna have to put it in the previous palette, but then it's fine. Oh my sweet Jesus. How many of these? The answer is a lot. I don't even need to finish that sentence. The answer is a lot. I have a lot of these. I really like green. I really like dark green. Like forest green is my all-time favorite color. And so we're gonna have a lot. I think that I absolutely suffered from a lack of green in my life. I'm gonna, sorry, this is blocking the light a bit. Yes, I absolutely suffered from a lack of green eyeshadow in my life and we we're making up for lost time. It's vaguely annoying. Uh, I was just noticing that Cleona's pan is a little bit smaller than Sydney Grace's. 
like you can see it kind of sticks out here but at the same time it's like almost nothing is gonna like match up like that man i guess that is a warm blue it comes off as a lot more teal but like when you put it next to like as you build this out like that is so much more blue it's fascinating I bought a lot of shadows in this color family. Don't know if you noticed. Like cool greens. So I'm not like super surprised that I'm having a hard time delineating between them. The difference between these two is really slight, but one is a little bit more warm. The ones that I was, was picking up and putting down, one is blue mist and one is green mist, and they are both white with a shift to it. This is the big three from ColourPop, and this also has a green shift to it. Excellent. I love it when there's a color right between two colors. died and I had to wait for it to charge because I don't believe in spare batteries uh, so if the lighting is different and everything that's why but we're gonna wrap this up because I am very keen on having this palette figured out because I mean I've been waiting <laughs> been waiting to do this for a really long time I've been waiting for the Cleo order waiting for the Sydney Grace order, waiting to do the swatch parties, waiting, 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 and I'm not very good at waiting. Just ask my spouse. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm very like eager to, be eager to have this in order because I am. <laughs> But yeah, we're just we're just keeping on going where we were going. Uh, my perception of light might be a little different than it was before, just because the the light. Oh, because I don't have my ring light on. But that would help a lot. There we go. I have a friend, uh, Julia. That I met on Instagram and when I'm done with this I'm gonna send her a picture and be like see look at all the greens <laughs> this is just what I got in the past couple of months I have a problem it's not a problem it's not a problem first of all you can stop anytime I want second of all it's only a problem if you're not happy and I'm very happy the number of greens in my life, especially this one. I'm like trying desperately to get like all of the teals that I can <laughs> together. I guess, I guess we can get into one blues now. Yeah, totally. That's totally what that is. Totally planned that.
I don't know if this made it into the swatch into the swatch video with Imani or not. If not, mea culpa, because it's stunning. Given the number of like blank spaces, we might end up going into a third palette, but I really I don't want to do that. So I will do my best to avoid it. Oh well, fuck you. Amy, I blame you for this. Touch of glam, looking at you. What the hell? Understand. I still don't understand how I ended up with so many freaking yellows and reds. Like I'm specifically not supposed to be doing that. And if you're sitting over there saying, like, well, Gina, you bought them. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, I know. <laughs> Doesn't explain it though. <laughs> This is gonna be one of those shades where I pull over and be like, no, it's purple, and then you put it back and you're like, no, it's blue. I want this over here, but I'm also pretty sure it's not gonna have anything that really goes with it. But like all of these very clearly go together. So general is going to be uh, bourbon into shimmers and mattes. That might make this easier, might make it worse. We'll find out. This is kind of interesting. And by kind of interesting, I mean kind of probably a pain in my butt. I do feel like these three are pretty distinct color families. There's not nearly enough of them to like do a whole thing with. Okay, 
so these are definitely more blue than purple or indigo so let me just smoosh some stuff over Like, why? Why? Why do you have to be so perfect? Look at all these freaking fuchsias I've got. Look at this. Who does this? Not me. Certainly not me. Why would I do that to myself? I don't even like that color. She doesn't even go here. So the, these were the two shades I was talking about in the um, in the swatch party video with Amani that were like, it's like, oh, I've already got this, but this is Bon Bon and then Magic Act from Sydney Grace, and Bon Bon has this really cool like blue sheen to it, where Magic Act is a bit more flat. Why I got a map with goddamn glitter in it, I don't know. In fact, I might just put that off to the side. Yeah, so like, Paradiso, Magic Act, and Bon Bon are all really similar. Um, interestingly, I know that, uh, Touch of Glam has a shade called The Future is Fuchsia, and I don't see it here. I thought I had pulled all my Touch of Glams, which might mean interesting things for this project here in a few minutes when I go to look for it. That probably should have been step one. darn you Sydney Grace for making such a perfect purple. It doesn't really fit, but that's okay. Maybe let's do this. So one thing that you can do when you have to like split a row is like, so here, I have the, the cooler side of the row goes this way and the warmer side of the row goes that way. So it, it, it will at least be a little bit more cohesive in that way. That's typically how I sort colors like that. But if I put it there, I'm gonna lose track.
I was gonna say originally it might be. Oh, it's so pretty. It's Queen of Mean. Oh my gosh. Fuck. Well, at some point in all of that, I stopped recording, but here we are. Hopefully, it wasn't too long ago. Or I will kill something. But we're we're in a pretty good place. And I'm just kind of doing some refining before I go. Like I'm doing some refining in here before I go back to the red and green palette to do some adjustments. I did decide to just take out too much because it's a matte with a glitter and I hate them, so I don't anticipate that I will keep it. One of the things that I really like about Sydney Grace's matte formula is that it's very matte. Like, you pick up any of these, most of the mattes here are from Sydney Grace, and they're just like, we're matte. We don't have a sheen, we don't have like anything going on, we're just matte. And that's really nice. Everything's a little crooked here. And I don't know if that's like the, I don't know if that's a result of like my different, like slightly different pan sizes or what, but I'm going to try not to let it bother me too much. All right, so we're gonna slide that over anchor the pinks in this, if that will make everything else in this row make more sense. These are two, this is a toadstool and a glass bowl. They look quite a bit alike in their base, but their reflect is different. Since glass bowl's reflect is more green, not glass bowl, hex, might it into the greens, which, you know, that won't cause any problems at all. I think if we go just by its reflect, it definitely belongs in here. <sighs> I'm just gonna drop it here for a second. I know it doesn't really go very well. Um, This is such a weird thing to anchor this row with, but I think it's technically right. I don't know, this, this row's freaking me out a bit. I feel like these are all a lot more yellow for this row, but this row works well. I'd say these are a bit more green, like more green than this row should be. forming here, folks. Like, what's the base sheet? These are all pretty desaturated. I don't feel like it's an orange. Maybe it is. Well, definitely not this one. building a neutrals palette. I'm just trying to sort out what's here into something remotely intelligible. Not that anybody in their right mind would be worried that I'm building a neutrals palette. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's one the hell of a mass tone. I'm pretty sure I have lots of yellow oranges to fill out a row like this. Here's my uh, greenish yellow row that I was looking for earlier. Turns out they're all brown. <laughs> Keep trying to find a place for Starboy, and it's just, he's just, or I'm sorry, get naked. She's just a special little snowflake. So I have no idea what the fuck to do with this. I'm so worried about it going there because it looks fucking boring. <laughs> definitely need another palette. I guess we're gonna need another palette anyway for these guys. As she gestures wildly in, in this direction. Take this row, put it over here, and I guess I need to combine the um, the super cool blues with the um, very cool purples. Perhaps we might say indigo. I don't know if I will ever get tired of that, so just warning you. Everything comes the fuck on in order. In fairness, I'm pretty sure I had this happen to me with my first palette too. I had to have a row like this for these earthy yellows. Because they just don't really fit anywhere else. And I think I had to do this very same thing where I had to like uh, move everything over once I was fairly certain I'd had it all figured out. I'm going to be very interested to see all of these compared with my like the shadows that are currently in the you know the big palettes see how many come up as like dupes or close dupes. And I think that will be a difficult day indeed. I, I did my best to not like come away with a bunch of dupes, but I can never be like 100% confident until you've got them here in front of you. Now, I bet you, once we move this column over, uh, we're gonna be like, hey, some of these don't match right. <laughs> and then we'll have a whole new pile of frustration. Does all right. Um, not super, so then you're saying I'm not super worried about it as I move things around. 
I'm trying not to be super worried about it. Maybe that's the best, better way to put it. <laughs> I wonder if there is a way to do an earth tone palette that doesn't make them all seem so boring. Because <sighs> they're really not. And I really like earth tones. But at the same time, like I'm looking at them here, I'm like, man, these look really dingy and gross. And I'm like, why do I have them? But I have them because they're pretty. <laughs> Maybe I could do a brights and a darks palette. Hmm, that would be interesting. All right, so now I'm gonna put in my greeny yellows. are slightly different but I want to swatch them to be sure yeah like one of them is Colourpop's Paper Tiger wow the other is Sydney Grace Dirt Road like one of them is definitely more orange but they're very similar still trying to find a good place for Toadstool still coming up short I will say I'm somewhat relieved that building the reds row has been so difficult because that means I didn't order enough, like I didn't order really a good amount of reds, which is exactly what should have happened. laid something out in one of these Adept palette, the Adept 88 palette, and I'm kind of cranky because like it's an 88 palette but the 88 like doesn't fit in evenly and these are all like single shadows. It's not like they're my depotted ones. Just, I don't know, it makes me cranky. But I'm also kind of like you made an 88 palette. You're calling it an 88 palette. Why is there extra space? That legitimately makes me cranky. I'm not super thrilled about it. Which is even more like frustrating because this is easily, like in terms of construction and everything, this is easily the, the best palette, like the best of these palettes that I have. This brown. go better in like one of the blue rows but it's fine the other ones in there too I apologize I it is my intent and desire to email the or um at least DM the folks uh, at JD Glow and be like, hey, can I repan your shadows? Will it kill them? And is there anything I need to expect? Because I don't like that your freaking pans are so big. <laughs> All right, so, okay, should just this up a bit? We are done. This is the temporary setup for the next few months until I've gotten to know these eyeshadows and what's good about them uh, and how they work and all of that good stuff. And once I do that, I should be able to integrate them back into my palette, uh, into my giant palettes and 
we will go into the next phase of everything. If you liked this, if you liked watching me rearrange single shadows into a an aesthetically pleasing uh, format, let me know, hit that like button, give me a comment as well, that helps me out a ton. If you like me and my flowing red hair, please do also sub subscribe to the channel. I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for the foreseeable future. You can find me on the internet at Faces by Gina. I have a Facebook and an Instagram where I upload every single day. I hope that you're having a great day, no matter where you are. Please remember to think deeply, critically engage the world around you, and be good to yourself and good to others as well. I'll see you out there on the internet. Bye.